Today is the 3rd of January in the much awaited year 2022 and if you are watching this episode of the year I want to say God is and has been very faithful to us individually and even as a nation. I tell you it will continue to get better. On this very first episode of the year we shall be focusing on so many issues that will help shape Nigeria as a nation and position the nation as truly the giant of Africa. Yes, we can, in spite of all our challenges. We shall be taking a look at politics, economy, security, employment, infrastructural development, energy and health related issues, as well as the electioneering process geared towards achieving the much anticipated free, fair, safe and credible general election in 2023 and also making Nigeria a better place for each and every one of us. The ultimate goal is actually to bring to limelight issues that will help shape most, if not all, the facets of the economy for the betterment of both the leaders and the led. Now, what are some of the areas that government must focus on this year if we must get to the promised land? How can we shape the year 2022 for the better? What are the things we must avoid as a nation? What will be the role of the citizens this year if we must get it right? These are questions guests shall be focusing on in the very first episode of the program in 2022. This is Nigeria Today. I'm Lydia Ojiochi. Welcome to the program. With me in the studio to discuss issues to shape 2022 is former Commissioner for Information and Strategy and Public Affairs Analyst, Honorable Ahmed Saju. Welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Same to you. Also with me in the studio is a very familiar face, a Public Affairs Analyst, Jide Ojo. Welcome to Nigeria today. I saw you last year. Well, thank God I've seen you this year. Happy New Year. We, we, we actually closed the studio together last year. <laughs> and it's, it's a very refreshing to be on the first edition of yes. Nigeria today thank you. in 2022. Happy thank New Year, uh, viewers. Thank you. Thank you. Let me begin with Honorable Ahmed. Could you please enumerate some of the areas or sectors that we must focus on this year, 2022, if we must maximize the numerous human and natural resources that this country is blessed with? Thank you very much. I, I, let me say a very happy new year to Nigerians. Uh, you started on a very hopeful note uh, that uh, the country will be better. Uh, the, I also listened to Mr. President, President Muhammadu Buhari, he was sounded uh, very, very, on a very hopeful note. Uh, I think um, if we really want to get it right uh, this year, the most important thing we have to focus on is to secure our country. Uh, even the cycle of elections that will come up in 2023, uh, the bulk of the activities, the campaigning and the, the processes of identifying candidates and, and all that will take place in 2022. And we cannot afford to falter in the area of security to the extent that uh, it affects all other activities. And uh, don't forget, we also have very serious economic challenges because uh, productive capacity, particularly in the areas of agriculture, were interrupted by a number of security challenges last year. We hope that uh, this year we, we would be able to have a better and more secure country so that we can undertake other activities in uh, an atmosphere of peace and uh, you know, security for our people. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you, you, you talked about security. Now, Mr. Gide. Let's talk, to, let's talk about another sector. How, in your opinion, can Nigeria work towards realizing her dream of becoming the best investment destination in the world this year? How can we shape Nigeria in that direction this year? Well, um, we have our job cut out for us. Um, barring no 
all foreseen circumstances in terms of uh, COVID-19 pandemic variant. Uh, you know, uh, we are officially in the fourth wave, and that is actually impacting negatively on the economy, aside from issue of insecurity. But thankfully, we've been able to get a uh, vaccine. About nine vaccines have been uh, produced to as antidotes to the uh, COVID-19 variant. But economically, particularly if you want to uh, boost the economy or improve on the productive capacity of Nigeria, one thing we have to do is the ease of doing business. They have to be seriously taken care of. You know, um, if you want Nigeria to be an investment destination, what investors, foreign or local investors, will be looking at is how investable is your environment. Um, the issue of security will be germane to them. But also, what about the uh, adjudicatory process in terms of dispute, if there is this trade dispute? Uh, luckily, we have the National Industrial Court to adjudicate. But what about other variables in terms of ease of doing business. For instance, clearing of goods at the port is still a logistic nightmare. Uh, people import goods, uh, they import raw materials. It takes months mm -hmm. before they could clear these goods and take it to where they will use it. So setting up factories in Nigeria is a coolian. Uh, but beyond that is issue of multiple taxation. Invest, investors are also looking at what's your tax uh, policy mm -hmm. in Nigeria. And I've had a number of investors complaining about multiple taxation by local government, state government, federal government, all of them bringing uh, you know, bills to be paid. Oh, uh, this one, you talk of company tax pay tax, um, VAT, and all of that. And this is eating deep into the profit margin of Can the imagine. investors. So we need to do something about the issue of money. Then also access to credit as well as access to land. Hmm. These are also very important because even if investors bring their money to Nigeria to invest, they need land for those who want to set up factory or manufacturing concerns. And getting certificate of occupancy on any land acquired is very, mm -hmm. uh, it's like, uh, you know, ca uh, a camera passing through the eye of the needle. Mm -hmm. We need to simplify everything that will incentivize investors okay. to come and invest in Nigeria. Okay, now, Honorable Ahmed, you actually touched on uh, this year being a year for campaign, get towards the elections in 2023, but still, I want you to talk more on, the, on politics, politicking towards uh, uh, general elections, which will be in full, full gear uh, this year. What are some of these things that we must put in place or avoid if we must achieve free, fair, safe, and credible elections? Well, uh, at least one of them is a, a very robust electoral law. And uh, as you know, the electoral uh, law that was enacted by the National Assembly, taken to the present for assent, had been returned to the National Assembly. I think we need to speedily you know, have an electoral law in place that can guide the entire process. And uh, one that can capture some of the legal lacuna that was observed earlier, like uh, things to do with electronic transmission, things to do with you know, use of electronic uh, means for voting. These were lacking in, in previous laws, and so we should consolidate and, and make them very, very clear in the new law. Uh, we, we also need uh, serious understanding amongst the political class. I think the rancorous nature of our politics will make uh, politicking very, very adverse to our developmental objectives. And it's also, it, it also affects our stability. 
we must find a way to make sure that politicians reduce their rancorous uh, nature of doing business, if, if, if you will allow me to use uh, that terminology, so that we can have uh, an electoral or a political system that is very accommodating, that is issue-based, that is peaceful, uh, because when you have other uh, security challenges, and if for any reason, you know, the politics becomes too rancorous, uh, some of the very desperate politicians may even engage, you engage people who are already, you know, security threats to the country and bring them into the political scene and create further confusion within the political uh, arena. And I think if we don't get it right with our politics, we would have difficulty getting it right with our economy mm -hmm. and we would have difficulty getting it right with our development. So we need to get it right politically. And this year, for example, uh, practically all the parties, by law, all the parties will have to nominate candidates for the various offices that are available in, in the next cycle of elections in the country how they conduct the nomination process, how they manage the nomination process, how they manage the internal rifts that may result from choices within the parties will all impact, you know, either positively or negatively on the, on the uh, political process. And like I said, once we get it wrong with the political process, yes. we will have difficulties with the governance process, we will have difficulty with the economic uh, progr uh, progress we're, we're supposed to make, and we will have difficulty with development, developmental challenges. And I, I think we need to get it right in our politics. Yes, you really talked about the importance of she uh, security in achieving anything we want to achieve, especially in all sectors of the economy. Now, Mr. Jide, now, he has talked about security now. What should be the best ways to tackle the issues of insecurity this year as a government and as a people? Better coordination. Um, better coordination, particularly among the tiers of government. Um, they cannot be working in silos and think that we will overcome our insecurity challenge. There is suppose you know, uh, among the armed forces, we have joint military tax force. But what about state, local government, and federal? Uh, how coordinated are they? Every governor pockets millions, if not billions, in security votes. What do they use it for? Can we have better accountability around that security vote, which many people have referred to as a slush fund, um, can we infuse technology mm. in the fight against corruption? I mean, in the fight against insecurity. Security. We cannot, I mean, the Mr. President gave a marching order since 2016. Every year recruit 10,000 policemen, constables. Yes, that is being followed, although there was a law, there was a stall in, in 2020, but that has been overcome by the, after the, the court decision uh, between Police Service Commission and the former Inspector General of Police. But what I'm saying is that we need to infuse the use of technology. CCTV, drones, surveillance, uh, what you have, yeah. whatever, oh. hardware. We have NICOMSAT, Nigeria Communication Satellite. We have NITDA. We have NCC. All of these need to also create any additional thing that could help our security agencies to be more effective and productive. Thank you very much. We'll talk more. Let's take a break now to hear Nigerians on the areas they want government to focus on this year. Don't go away as we'll continue the discussion shortly. Well, I think they should focus on the developments of the country like infrastructure developments like road hospitals schools to make things better for those that can afford it government focus on let me say employing youths more you no know, many youths now in nigeria they don't have decent jobs 
things are very very expensive so i want government uh, to help to bring down some prices go to the markets do market survey know the prices of things help to reduce price first security human survival is um is maintained now if we do not maintain um, security then internally we're amongst many most miserable in the sense that we will be fighting ourselves definitely it's for them to fulfill what whatever they promised you to do such as job opportunities for graduates um the insecurity also i think they should do something about it the kidnap because on our economy on our unemployment in this country because there are many youth in our country they are looking for a job there's no job in nigeria because of the kidnapping going on i want government to help us fight it Welcome back. The program is Nigeria Today and Nigerians have spoken on what they want government, the areas they want government to pay more attention to. We're discussing issues to shape 2022 and still with me here in the studio is former Commissioner for Information and Strategy and Public Affairs Analyst Honorable Ahmed Sajo and the Public Affairs Analyst Jide Ojo. Now Honorable Ahmed, one of the things that I interview we is kept repeating in that uh, short film you saw, is the need for government to tackle youth unemployment in Nigeria. How best can this be achieved this year? I, I think um, everybody speaks, uh, speaks to issues that concerns them. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that beyond just looking at youth unemployment as uh, the core issue, I think the core issue in the country is poverty. We need to address the issue of poverty very squarely. There is a high level of poverty in the country and it limits the productive capacity of quite a large number of our people. It limits their capacity to participate in expanding economic frontiers. And, uh, you know, employment is about a very strong and virile economy. And if our economy is bedeviled by excessive poverty, you know, amongst the people. The, the economy will not be able to be robust enough to, to, to get people to, get in, to, to, to be employed. First, we have to accept that there is nowhere in the world that the gov government employs every eligible person. Mm -hmm. We must have an economy that, you know, allows the private sector to expand their activities. Factories should be opened Everything should be like, we, we, I've always said it, and I will say it again. You know, uh, when, when textile mills were working in Kaduna, the textile industry was the highest employer of labor. It was higher than the government. Sud suddenly, the textiles collapsed. If the government really wants, uh, you know, to tackle unemployment, for example, go back and return back the textile industries in Kaduna and not only return the textile industries in Kaduna, but follow it up with a robust policy that says, particularly maybe the uniform of our uniformed services must be produced by our textiles here in Nigeria. That will expand, you know, the, 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 their markets and ensure that they survive whatever situations they find themselves in. Yes. We can increase um, productivity in that area. Mm -hmm. We have, ag our agriculture is, is still largely subsistent, despite all the monies we are pumping into agriculture is largely subsistent. You do not find very large productive activities. We have seen the pyramids, you know, return back, the rice pyramids and uh, one, other, one or two other commodities. But has that impacted, you know, on the prices of these commodities in the market? They have not. Some of them complain to you about price, mm -hmm. high prices in the market. Mm -hmm. So all of these things, if you put them together, you know, you expand the, 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 the productive capacity of our economy. Mm -hmm. Work on agriculture. 
work on manufacturing so that you can have many more people Employed. engage in those areas okay. then you can expand the employment window okay but if no. we talk about employment as government employment only mm. i think we're deceiving ourselves Definitely. because it's impossible for government to employ everybody that's true but government can no. create an enabling environment for the economy to expand to the point where it can absorb uh, productive hands which is what employment is it's all, all about, about that. thank you very much now mr jide let's talk about the solid minerals sector it is one area that we may not have taken good advantage advantage of in nigeria how best can government at all levels take advantage of that sector again um policies programs projects uh of government needs to really be uh, world class in terms of our s solid mineral exploration uh, processes and procedure. We have Ministry of uh, Solid Mineral, a whole ministry dedicated to that, um, just the same way we have Ministry of Petroleum Resources. But unfortunately, this is 2022. We, our, our solid mineral is largely untapped. We have minerals in commercial quantity, over 40 of them. And you will have expected, if not for our over-dependence on oil and gas, this should have been money spinners for us. Lydia, let me take the instance of the Ajakuta still rolling in. What is happening? Mm. That iron or uh, uh, Ajakuta uh, steel complex has been comatose for over 20 years. People are working their drawing salary for doing nothing. And successive administration keeps saying, oh, we are sorting it out. There was a time they said there is a legal tosu. Uh, there is a time they said they are trying to settle out of court. There is a time they said they needed to invest some money. There is a time they, they, it was even privatized. So what is happening with Ajakuta? What is happening with... Look, Dan Gote today, but for him, our limestone will have been fallow. But for Dan Gote, Boa, and, uh, you know, Ibeto, and a host of others, who heavily invested in the conversion of limestone to cement, we will still have been importing cement here today. And yet, look at Sanfara. There is gold, there is lead. In Nasarawa, which is adjoining state mm -hmm. here, there are over 30 solid minerals yes. in commercial quantity. Yes. And those state is sitting atop the second or third largest bitumen, which is used for road construction in the world. So why do we still have to import bitumen to tie our roads? So something needs to give way. Mr. President needs to overhaul that ministry. If it needs to be, whatever needs to be privatized, whatever needs to be commercialized, whatever we can do to incentivize the uh, foreign direct investment into the solid mirror sector, we should do it so that we can boost our revenue generation. Thank you, Mr. Jay. In fact, we, we need one hour or more to talk about all the sectors that we need to focus on this year. But that's the much you can take on this edition of Nigeria Today. We thank you. Former Commissioner for Information and Strategy and Public Affairs Analyst, Honorable Ahmed Sajo. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. The pleasure is mine. Jide Ojo, it's always a pleasure to have you, a Public Affairs Analyst. We appreciate your insights. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Stay safe. I will also thank you, our viewer, for always being there. Don't forget you can also watch this and other editions of the program on youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. Thank you for watching. Happy New Year once again. I am Lydia Udijoji. Goodbye.